How's it going, Rams? I'm Guy Madison Strassheim. And I'm your trusty Swedish chef, Hattie Williams. Welcome to the last CTV cook show of the semester. We have a lot lined up for you tonight, from a look into a new coffee shop in Fort Collins to a smoothie battle. And of course, we couldn't have the show without another edition of Cocktail Creations. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. On tonight's rendition of Cocktail Creations, I, head on o I headed on over to Copper Muse, one of Fort Collins' oldest distilleries. This small but mighty bar serves a, a variety of cocktails that is sure to make your night out complete. Coherent with its name, Copper Muse aims to build the perfect drink every artist can find their muse to. From the first sip to the last drop. What's up, Rams? Today we are back with another Cocktail Creations. I am here at Copper Muse Distillery, and I'm joined here with Danny, and she's got some amazing cocktails planned for us, and I can't wait to get started. What's the first drink we're making? So we're gonna start out with the Coco Chanel, which actually was one of our original cocktails on our original menu eight years ago. This one is a classic chocolate martini. What's the first ingredient that goes into this drink? So we're gonna put two ounces of vanilla vodka, and we're gonna pour it directly into our shaker. Perfect, what's next? And then next? we'll also do another two ounces of the chocolate liqueur. And the chocolate liqueur, what's in it? So it's got actual chocolate that we use when we infuse it. It's real chocolate, and so you're not gonna get any of the added sweetness or the syrupy nature that a lot of chocolate liqueurs have. And then we'll do two ounces of the half and half. Get that creamy deliciousness. I've never had half and half in a cocktail before, so I'm interested to see how this tastes. Yeah, it just gives it that really smooth note, tone. It's delicious. And What's then next? we're gonna put the fee foam in it. Fee foam is a great alternative when you don't want to use egg whites. There are a lot of vegans and vegetarians that don't want to use egg whites in their cocktails. So we're awesome. gonna put eight dashes of that in there. Okay. And then we're gonna top it with ice. Awesome. And then you'll take that, top it on there, make sure it's tightly packed. Yep, exactly. Cool. And then hold shake the top up. and shake it. Shake it really hard. There it is. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. This is one of the most important steps. Ooh. We're gonna drizzle the inside of the martini glass with chocolate syrup. Yeah. <gasps> Gorgeous. Wow. I'm an artist. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Is that enough? Yes, that's wonderful. Okay, perfect. And then we'll pour it in. Beautiful. Wow. It looks like a chocolate milkshake. Right. <laughs> wonderful. And alcoholic. then we're gonna put some chocolate syrup on top as well. Give it a beautiful little swirl. Oh. That way it's a nice pretty design. Wow, okay, and that's it. That's it. That wasn't so bad. A it relatively easy gorgeous. cocktail, but a beautiful cocktail. So tell me a little bit about, I know we put vanilla vodka in there, and yeah. you guys make that here yes, in-house. Yes, we do. Yeah, right back there. Everything that we have that has alcohol is made right back there. That's insane. So all of your alcohol and the whole whole bar is exactly. going to be from here. Yes. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Wow. Okay, I think I need to try it. It looks just so beautiful. Oh my gosh, that's really good. I've never had a chocolatey drink before, but yeah. that's actually really good. I'm really glad you like it. Oh my gosh. Nice. It's one of our favorites for sure. We have regulars that come in all the time specifically for this cocktail. I love it. All right. Well, that Coco Chanel drink definitely got my sweet tooth excited. I'm ready to see what else you have in store for me. So we're going to start with the peaches and regalia. So that's one of our most popular cocktails on our menu and part of that is because it's made with our gin with hibiscus. So what's the first ingredient that's going to go in our drink? We're going to put that gin in there. All so right. So two ounces of this gin. Gorgeous. Right. Then we're going to do two ounces of peach nectar. One dash of the peach bitters, which is a taller bottle there. Yes, exactly. Beautiful. 
Awesome. All right, what's next? We're gonna put two dashes of the lavender bitters, and this is just a droplet, so you're Ooh. gonna do, do two little drops, and then a drop of the rose water. Okay. The rose water is really potent, so you only need one drop. Then we'll top this with ice. Oh, and you just do it with, mm -hmm. wow, okay. And then Perfect. you flip it? Gorgeous, yeah. As long as you vacuum sealed it, you'll be just fine. And there we go. Beautiful. We We're going to top it off with these frozen peaches, and I've got some tongs right there for you. And all three of those will just go on the side, and I like to fan them out a little bit. Beautiful. And then as you drink it down, it soaks the peaches, and then it gets that, oh. all of that nice alcohol goodness in there. And then you can eat the peaches at the end. Amazing. I'm dying to try this, so... I think I'm gonna go for it. Oh, wow. You can actually really taste the lavender in the rose. I wasn't, yeah. I was not expecting you to be able to taste that much mm -hmm. with just the little drops we did, but you really can. So every single thing on our menu pretty much is stuff that we came up with. Even the more so classic cocktails like margaritas, we have a miserita, which is our version of a margarita. So we have a lot of different things that we kind of put the muse spin on that are kind of classic, but the rest of the menu is just brand new things that we've all come up with over the years. Thank you so much for letting me join you today and make these amazing cocktails. They definitely please my taste buds, but for now, I'm gonna have to send it back to you guys in the studio. I had so much fun making the drinks at Copper Muse, and I learned so much about different ways that I can mix chocolate with alcohol and peaches with alcohol and really just any alcohol. It was fantastic. And something amazing that I learned is every single piece of alcohol that was in the store, every bottle, was actually made in the distillery right behind where we were making the drinks. So I got to see the process of how they actually made the alcohol I got to drink, and then I got to try it. Plus, you could actually buy the alcohol and take it home. I was tempted to get that gym bottle. It was just so gorgeous and beautiful. But with that, we're gonna have to take a quick break, but stick around for more Cook's content right here on CTV Channel 11. Living with someone you don't know on the other side of the wall is hard, especially if you don't know how to be a good roommate. The first thing that you'll want to do to be a good roommate is make sure that you always stay quiet. Be considerate of others when using common spaces and appliances. Hey buddy, what you doing? I'm just gonna need like 40 minutes. Be respectful of your roommate's privacy. Ugh, my bad. Finally, make sure that you clean up after yourself. Oh, fresh toothbrush. Have you seen my toothbrush? Follow these tips to get along with your roommates and your landlord. Welcome back from the break rooms. Now, I don't know about you, but I feel like there's one thing CSU is missing. I know exactly what you're talking about, Maddie. Is it smoothies? Yep, more specifically, smoothie bowls. To conquer our appetite for these refreshing treats, Hattie and I went to Nectar and Rush Bowls to figure out which place made our day very sweet. I'm Hattie. And I'm Maddie. And today for Food Fuse, we are trying to figure out who's got the best smoothie bowl in Fort Collins. Our first stop is Nectar, and we can't wait to try this refreshing treat. Nectar Juice Bar is a one-stop shop for all your juice needs, including wellness shots and, of course, smoothie bowls. We ordered the classic acai banana berry and watched as they added the house-made cashew milk into a blender, then a big scoop of acai. Next, they added a whole banana, a scoop of frozen strawberries, and blueberries. This yummy combination is then blended to perfection. Once it was done, it was placed into a bowl and topped with hemp seed granola, a fan banana, 
and a fan strawberry. Plus, just a sprinkle of some blueberries. Then came a drizzling of agave to bring the whole bowl together. We absolutely could not wait to dive right into the bowl. This has gone pretty smoothie, which is why we are so excited to check out our next place, Rush Bowls. Let's head on in. Rush Bowls is located right outside of campus and has more than enough choices to choose from. We decided to get the Oasis Bowl, which seemed like the refreshing choice. First, some coconut milk along with some peach juice is added to the blender. Then a scoop of frozen pineapple, banana, mango, and some strawberries are added in. The mixture is then blended until it is smooth and creamy. Finally, it is plopped into a bowl and decorated with some delicious toppings. These toppings included granola, some freshly sliced banana, and a healthy amount of honey. This bowl looked amazing and had a super awesome light pink color that we just couldn't resist. Oh, and did I mention the color changing spoons? Wow, both places were just so refreshing. I don't know how we're ever going to decide who's the winner. We'll acai you back in the studio. After trying both delicious smoothie bowls, I think I might have my winner. But which one are you leaning towards, Maddie? While nectar was delicious and had some of my absolute favorite fruits in it, I have to go with Rush Bowls. The Oasis Bowl just had so much flavor and really packed a punch with all the citrus in it. The granola to smoothie ratio was just perfect and I could not complain about the copious amounts of honey added to the top. Nectar did have an amazing selection of bowls and very fresh toppings. I love the environment of the store too. However, the store was a little far from campus, which makes it a bit harder to get to for students like us. Rush Bowls, on the other hand, was just as fresh and delicious, but I loved the honey on the top. This pushed my favor a little bit more toward Rush, Rush Bowls. The store is also much closer to campus. It looks like we agree for the first time in a long time. There's no need for a drum roll, but for the sake of it, let's do it anyway. And the winner of Hattie versus Maddie is... Rush Bowls! We should definitely petition to put a Rush Bowls in the LSC. I could have one of those smoothie bowls every morning. I agree. Our friends over at the Collegian actually battled it out for themselves over Nectar and Rush Bowls. And they actually chose Rush Bowls as their crowned winner too. To learn more about the differences between the two smoothie shops, check out their article on the Collegian website. Now, we're going to take a quick break so Hattie and I can get working on that petition. But stick around, we have more Cook's content coming right up. So there you are. Shuffling through a stack of resumes and you come to mind. This is it. First impression. My way in. But, uh, here's the thing. Can my resume show you how I truly stand out? Can one piece of paper really tell you my whole story? Like, that I was studying, going to night school while working two jobs just to help my parents pay for groceries. Or how any time there was an opportunity, I was the first one to step up. Because I wasn't going to let my life, my circumstances, dictate who I was going to become. And all of that, that determination, the commitment, the drive, that's me. And that's something you just can't put on paper. Look beyond the resume and discover new ways to develop great talent like me. Welcome back from the break. While smoothies are pretty delicious, I know that the only thing that will get me through my long day of classes is a nice cold glass of iced coffee. This week, I stopped by Lima Coffee, a coffee shop and roaster, to see what they were grinding up in their beautiful shop. 
Lima Coffee is a family-owned coffee shop and roaster that is located right off of South College Avenue. As you walk into this aesthetically pleasing coffee shop, you are sure to find anything to satisfy your coffee craving. Amanda Lima, co-owner of Lima Coffee, started the business with her husband, Diego Lima, combining their shared love of all things coffee. Lima basically started with a passion about people first and then coffee. My husband and I always loved how coffee brings us together and just creates a fun community. With fresh beans being roasted frequently and from lots of different places, it's no wonder Lima has become such a staple in Fort Collins. My husband, um, Diego, is the roaster. So we have a warehouse that we are roast all of our beans in. So we get them from several different countries that he brings in. We have a lot of that are single origin, so coffee that's just that one place, and then we do blend some of them together. But Lima isn't all about coffee. They also take pride in supporting all the small businesses and coffee shops throughout Fort Collins. Because we are a small local business, we like to support others. I think that's what's so great about Fort Collins. And so we try to really focus on local businesses. We have you know, coffee brewing equipment, we have artwork, uh, we even have one of our general manager that has her artwork here in the shop as well. If the two locations in Old Town and at the Foothills Mall weren't enough, the Lima family is ready to expand even more this summer. We're actually working on a new place that we're opening um, later this summer that will be a roastery with a coffee shop combined together. We're hoping with that to bring the experience from the coffee shop that people can also see the roasting process and learn more about where their drinks come from. Lima is a great place if you are looking for some delicious drinks and a fun place to study with friends. We're so grateful how much the community has reacted to us and we hope that we can be a place that you can meet with people, study, just hang out if you want to. Even if you don't buy anything, just come in and hang out with our baristas. We love to see people and chat. So yeah, I hope you guys come on by. <laughs> Hattie, I really wish you could have came with me for this. It was really fun, and I loved all the really cool drinks. I personally tried the blueberry ice matcha, and it was so good. They put blueberry syrup in the bottom, and then the matcha, and then some vanilla, and it was just delicious. I had so much fun, and I brought Sam along with me to help get some of the B-roll shots, which was so much fun. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm definitely more of a mocha girl but I've never actually tried matcha. I would love to go there and try it out. I mean, it looked delicious and it looked like such a cool place to visit. I'll definitely have to check it out. It's super cute. I had so much fun at Lima and I can't wait to see what they have in store for their new location this summer. Stay tuned after the break when Hattie and I try making some delicious crepes. Will it be great or will we say, oh crepe? I am what hunger looks like in America. I am an eight-year-old girl who's not excited for the last day of school. Because this may be the last time I'll have lunch. Till September. I am a single father of two who works three part-time jobs. And that's still not enough to put food on the table. I am a 16-year-old boy who just got my first job to help feed my little sisters. I was created by artificial intelligence from faces of the one in eight Americans who struggle with hunger. People you pass by every day but never knew they were hungry. Feeding America, 200 food banks strong. Welcome back. Now, on our final cook show of the semester, we thought it'd be a fun to try a classic French favorite, crepes. All you need to make crepes is flour, salt, eggs, milk, water, and butter, plus all the toppings of your choice. We have our desired toppings here today. We've got some Nutella, bananas, and strawberries. But before getting started on the actual batter that we need for the crepes, we have to heat our 12-inch nonstick skillet over medium heat and let half a tablespoon of butter melt over the pan. So if you want to hand me that butter, I'm going to get that melting and we can start on our batter. Here you are. All right. It's kind of hard to see with these amazing eyebrows I have on, but I'm pretty sure this is two tablespoons, right? Yes. All right. So we got two tablespoons. Was it two tablespoons or half a tablespoon? It was two tablespoons. It was half a tablespoon. 
Mm. We'll just melt half. This looks about enough. <laughs> All right, mm. I'll get this melting, but if you want to start on that batter. Okay, the first thing you're going to do is for the crepe mixture is grab a large bowl and add in one cup of flour. So I'm going to do that real fast. Ooh, I'm moving the table. This is going to be uh, so good. I am so excited. Crepes are definitely one of my more favorite, uh, well, foods in general, but I just love food. Same. <laughs> I just love it. <laughs> but crepes, you know, they bring, they're like flat pancakes. And then you add like amazing toppings and they're just fantastic. And everyone loves a good pancake. Oh yeah. All right. And then I'm going to add a pinch of salt after I wipe the flour off my hands. Okay, just gonna do a little I'm save that butter for later. Oh man. We're just gonna play it by ear with the butter. Sometimes just you can do that. All right. All right, and then I'm gonna whisk that up just to combine the salt you and the flour. Fork? Oh, the fork might be a little better. Get some whisk. air in we there. We gotta whisk it. Ooh. All right. What is this doing? I, I don't, I'm not sure. Sometimes when you whisk like salt and flour together, it like adds air into the mixture, but. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we've got <laughs> that whisked up. Now All what? All right, now we're gonna add our eggs um, and we're gonna need two eggs. Awesome, so I got one, two. Do you wanna crack them? I can, you hold Kay. that bowl steady though. I will. One, ooh. Delicious. I made it go flying everywhere. Here you are. There we go. All right. And then, ah, egg number two. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. And then we're going to, once again, whisk that up. Look at that steam. Look at that steam. Let's hope the fire alarm doesn't go off on us. Yes. Not, not this time. So as you can see, I'm just mixing the eggs in. It's making a fun little. Got to whisk it. Whisk it. Oh, another arm workout for us. We're professionals. We know how to do this. You're right. Got to get that middle part too. Delicious. Ooh. All right. Do you want to keep stirring that while I get our next step? Yeah. All right. And then we're going to grab our milk. And it's a half a cup of milk. All right. All righty. And I'm using a liquid measuring cup. Very important. Yeah, I'll hold it for you. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. I think this is about the right height. Perfect. <laughs> Not too much, Maddie. <laughs> My God. And then do we just put it in there? Um, we are going to slowly add it in and mix at the same time. Okay, you add it in. Good lord, this is steamy. You <laughs> add it in, I'll whisk. We might want to turn it down just a tiny bit. Yeah, maybe <laughs> just a little. <laughs> there we go. All right. And then once we get this mixed in, we're also going to add our water. Perfect. You want to pour a little more? Yes. Oh, see, it was crumbly at first. And I, I was a little nervous, but now it's starting to look a now little more starting, battery. Yeah, now it's starting to look a little bit more like batter. I wasn't trusting you at first, but... I gotta find the water. Oh, there it is. I see it. Well, water is clear, so it's a little harder to find. That's true. It disappeared on me. All right. Gosh, All right. the arm workout. Just a few more. Okay. Oh! oh. <laughs> I spilled just a little, but it's okay. All right, and then our water has already been measured out for us. Beautiful. So. All right, go for it. We're just going to do a little bit at a time like we did with the milk. This is insane. And you're just going to like mix and combine these ingredients until you have like a smooth, pourable batter. <sighs> it's an arm workout. I know. I'm just going to add a little bit more water. Perfect. There we go. And you do have to add it slowly because if you add it all at once, it just gets too watery and yeah. the batter really isn't able to 
to thicken up as it as it needs to and get all that air in it. Yeah. All right. A little bit more. I think we're good. All right. That's perfect. All right. Now what? Now that we have our batter, we're going to slowly pour about one fourth cup of the crepe mixture into our pan and tilting the pan in a circular motion to cover the bottom and get the crepe to be really thin. Oh gosh, do you think it's a little too watery? Should we add more flour? I think that's good. Okay, all right. <sighs> all right moment ready? of truth. Moment of truth. All right. Gotta go real slow. Okay, now, yeah, that's probably good. And then we're just gonna start circling it. Oh. As I am circling the pan. It's gonna be a buttery crepe. Yeah, I think we might That's okay. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I can see it. It's like keeping shape, too. Yes. It's not, I thought, it, you know, I thought it's so watery, it's just gonna go everywhere, but it's really keeping its round shape. That's yeah. amazing. So we're just gonna let this cook to let it um, cook for one and a half minutes until the bottom becomes lightly brown and the surface loses its shine. Um, and then we're gonna carefully flip the crepe. So it's not quite done yet. Are we flipping it with a spatula or with your hand? Or <sighs> probably or do we do it with a f fancy flipping pan? Probably with the spatula is gonna be best. Okay, okay. All right, I wanna flip it, is it ready? How do you know it's ready? When the top loses its shine a little bit. Well, it's still pretty shiny. Yes. Unfortunately. As you can see. Let's look at, here, I'm going to cut up some while you do that. Do you want to put it back on here? Does Maybe. it need to cook? I don't know. Probably. <laughs> All right, let's cut up some of our toppings while that cooks. We got some strawberries. And be careful, that's the butter knife we need. <laughs> This is our fruit <laughs> knife. There's that. Alrighty, I'm gonna Let's come over some. here. I'll switch you places. We're Kay. swapping. We got some bananas. Ooh, <laughs> it's a little too buttery. <laughs> we added just a tad too much butter. But Which is why it looks like that. It looks like this. Unfortunate. <laughs> That's okay. We can make another one. Yes, we and can. And luckily, our amazing producer, Morgan, actually cooked some up for us beforehand. So, we, while we might not be pros at making these crepes, Morgan is. Morgan is. Thank goodness. Thank goodness for Morgan. All right, it's time to chop these up. All righty. Ah! Here is what they are supposed to look like. See, that's, now that's beautiful. All right. Um, delicious flat pancakes. They're a little brown. They kind of look like tortillas. Yes, that, um, that's exactly what they look and like. And I'm very actually. excited to try them. All right. They're, ver they're very flat, as you can see, flat pancakes. So. I love it. So we've got some strawberries. We've got some bananas. Let me get one more strawberry chopped up. And then we have Nutella, too. So. Alrighty, I'm well, ready for this. Let's try one right now because we do have to wrap up. But unfortunately, we're out of time. <laughs> let's go ahead and try it real fast. Okay. Mm. Pretty good. Wow. I like it. It doesn't even have the toppings in it, and it's amazing. Yeah. So good. Well, crepes were definitely a good note to end the show on. We can we can say these turned out pretty increpable. Good one, Hattie. It's been so much fun hosting this show, and I'm so, so grateful for Hattie Williams, my wonderful co-host, and our lovely producer, Morgan, and everyone behind the scenes. It's truly been a pleasure to share my love for cooking with such amazing people here at CTV. I would also like to thank my amazing co-host, Maddie Strassheim, apologize. <laughs> <laughs> for joining me on my final semester at CTV. Thank you all for tuning in to watch us cook, try different treats, and share Fort Collins favorites with all of you this semester. Tune in tomorrow night for our news broadcast right here on CTV Channel 11. Have a great night.